So I really recommend students to do this uh, homework sheet because Passing your special angles is basically the expectation for the first half of the unit. Um, and to be honest with you, it's nothing special. It's exactly the same math that you did last semester or last year in grade 11. Um, you master 30, 45, and 60, and then from there, you can master your second, third, and fourth quadrant. Um, and the quadrantal angles just draw out the unit circle. I'm going to do uh, work with sine, cos, and tan first because to fill the last three columns, all you have to do is take the reciprocal of the uh, columns, uh, first, second, and third columns respectively. Okay, so I'll start with these nine because those are the ones you have to master. So sine of pi over six, one half, which means cos of pi over three is one half. Root two over two. And so for all these cells, I'm gonna rationalize the denominator. And then root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. 10 of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. That means this is root 3, and this is 1. So if I'm going to fill in the row for 2 pi over 3 here, I'm just going to refer back to pi over 3. For 3 pi over 4, I'm going to refer to pi over 4. For 5 pi over 6, I'm going to refer to pi over 6. This is one half, root three over two, and root, oops, root three over three. Okay, but it's not going to be exactly the same because these three angles here, two pi over three, three pi over four, and five pi over, five pi over six, they're in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, cosine and tan are negative. Okay, now let's work with 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 3. And these are in the third quadrant. But nonetheless, I will still refer to copy the magnitudes of the ratios. Forget the signs, let's just copy the magnitude of the ratios. All right, simple enough. Copy the ratios, the magnitude, sorry. And now I have to fill in the signs. So in the third quadrant, sine and cosine are negative. And of course, tan is positive. Okay, fourth quadrant. So we have root three over two, root three over two, one half, one half, root two over two, root two over two, one. Uh, this is root three and root three over three. Now in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive, so sine and tan, negatives. Okay, so what I haven't filled in is zero radians, pi over two, pi radians, three pi over two, and two pi radians. So these angles are called quadrantal angles. They don't have a reference angle, okay? They lie on the x or y axis, or the terminal arm of those angles. Okay, so... What you do for these ones is you draw the unit circle, just like you would have done in grade 11. Because in grade 11, your question was not sine pi over two, for example, or sine 90 degrees. So you draw this unit circle, and you mark these four points, because this point is what you would refer to if the angle of rotation is zero radians. Pi over two radians, pi radians, three pi over two, uh, three pi over two radians, and two pi radians. So, oops, oh boy, one zero, one zero, and this one is zero one, negative one zero, and zero negative one. So if I am looking at sine of zero, then I'm referring to this point over here. So look at the y coordinate is zero, because sine is defined as the y coordinate of the point on the, on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate, and tan is the ratio of y coordinate to the x coordinate. And then let's go on for pi 2, it will be 1, 0, undefined, because the ratio would be 1 over 0. 
Let's keep going, you'll get zero, negative one, zero. For three pi over two, you'll get negative one, zero, undefined. And lastly, for two pi, you're gonna have zero, one, zero. And if you look, this is exactly the same as what you wrote in the first row for sine zero, co zero, and tan zero. And that makes sense because the relationship between the angles zero and two pi is the fact that they are coterminal. So that means all the ratios must be the same. The terminal arm is located in the exact same spot. Of course, the ratios are the same. All right, so last three rows here. Three columns. So I, let's, you know what, we'll change it up. We'll do the quadrantal angles first. So undefined, undefined, and one. Reciprocal one is still one. And this one will be reciprocal one un, un, undefined and zero. Undefined, negative one, and undefined. And not only is filling this table gonna help with this unit, but it's also gonna help in the next unit when we work with trig functions. So if you can imagine, we're trying to graph trig functions, uh, the sine function, cosine function, tan function, uh, knowing when uh, cosecant, secant, and cotan are undefined will be very, very helpful. Negative one, undefined, uh, zero. And this one, just copy the first row. All right, so reciprocal of one half is two. Reciprocal of root two over two is root two. Reciprocal of root three over two, I'll write two over root three, but of course we want to rationalize the denominator, which means it's going to be two root three over three. I'll show you the work, two, over root three, multiply by root three over root three. You'll get the numerator to be two root three, and the denominator is root three times root three, which is three. Okay, so two root three over three. This is gonna be root three, this is gonna be root three over three, and one. All right, we have, uh, what do we see? 27 more cells to go. But it's, it's a pattern, so you don't really have to think pretty hard. You're not making up new values. Okay, second quadrant. So we're looking at uh, secant, cotan, or negative. And then here we're looking at two, two root three over three, root three, one, root two, root two. What do we have here? Uh, two root three over three, two and root three over three. So here, cosecant and secant are negative. We're in the third quadrant. All right, last nine. So two root three over three, two root three over three root two root two one and this is two two root three over three and we have root three don't forget which ones are negative so in the fourth quadrant cosecant is negative and cotan is negative and secant is positive all right I uh, highly recommend you do this table just because it allows you to see the patterns and like I said, when we work with trig functions, it's going to come back.